So in this lesson, I'm going to teach you regular expression from the scratch. Uh, I'm assuming you have no knowledge of regular expression. Maybe you have some knowledge of programming, but you don't have any knowledge of regular expression. And the, the good thing about regular expression is that it's something you can learn in one programming language and you're able to use it in every other programming languages. And, and Java is a good place for us to start. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know and please remember to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below this video right now. If you click and subscribe to my channel, so you get updates when I make new lessons. Also, feel free to leave a comment for me. If you have challenges following any of this, leave a comment and I will get back to you to help you personally. So let's go ahead to start. So I want you to follow this lesson. So go ahead to create an empty file, as you can see. So I've created an empty file. I'm using Eclipse and call it, call it regex demo. So you can choose any other name you want. Now, what is regular expression? Regular expression is a construct or you uh, a sequence of uh, pattern that helps you to find out pattern in a test. Let's say you want to extract all phone numbers from a big document of 100 pages. You, you'll be able to use a regular expression to extract all these phone numbers. Or you want to get email address in a website, a website of so many pages. You want to extract all the email addresses. You can use regular expression. And that is what well, many spammers do. They write a regular expression that actually crawl a website and extract all the email addresses, and they now use it to be sending junk emails uh, to people. So regular expression is really very powerful. So create a new file, and then the next thing you want to do is to import two things. There are two classes in Java that I use with regular expression, and that is the pattern class and the matcha class. So I'm going to import them now. So they are in the java.util package, java.util.regex.pattern. So this is the first thing you want to import, and the next thing you want to import is java.util dot regex dot matcha so these are the two things you want to import so if you look at the right hand side of the screen you can see that there are different categories of regular expression we have the character matching we have boundaries we have groups we have quantifiers and uh, this uh, website is actually in the description box. You can see a link to it in the description box so you can follow along. So the first one is matching characters. So what is a regular expression that can be used to match characters? So let's quickly write the program that will take the pattern and also take a string and now check if this pattern matches the string, right? So let's write it and you see how it works. So I would like you to follow along, maybe pause the video and follow along because that is the easiest way to understand regular expression is to, for you to do them. So I'm going to start by creating a pattern. So to create a pattern, you simply say pattern pt is equal to. Now the pattern class does not have a public constructor. It only has a static method called compile. So we, are, we need to call this compile method by saying using the name of the class, so we can call the static method compile, and want to pass in a regular expression. So let's assume that we have our, our regular expression is regex. Uh, like regex uh, re is equal to, let's just give a name, java lessons, okay? So let's say this is a test we want to search, we want to use to search. Now, regular expression will be also a string. String re is equal to. So we'll define this as we move. All right. So. So we want to check whether this Java lessons match the regular expression given by re. So to create a pattern, you simply use a compile method and specify the regular expression you've defined. The next thing you want to do is to call the matcha uh, method of, so you can say uh, matcha is equal to pt dot matcha, okay? All right, so you give it a, a string, t-e-x-t. So this is what we want to match. 
Don't worry, we are going to make explanation line by line after now. So we have this uh, arrow. Okay, matcha M T. Let's call it matcha. Okay. So the next thing we are going to do is to now call matcha dot matchy. So let's say boolean. equal to empty dot matches and then I close it. So this is all you need to do to be able to set up and try regular expressions. So if you have this, we will now be able to test all of this. So the first thing I want to do is we, we are going to start from the first one. We have the dots. So the dot correspond to a regular expression that matches any character at all. So let's say we put it there dots and we use a character A. Let's print out the result. So let's print out the results. All right. So what we are doing here is that we are trying to match to check if A matches this regular expression dot, right? So the answer is going to be true because dots matches any uh, dot as a regular expression matches any character at all. So if I go ahead to run this, you find out that the output is true, as you can see. If I replace it with any other thing, let's say two or whatever I replace it with, is actually okay. So basically, you can see dot matches a single character. So so if I change this dot to three dots, so if we run it, it gives us true. So dot matches just one single character, right? So if I change this to 2K, you find out that it gives us false because we have three. But if I change the dots to two dots, you see that it also matches it. If I change this to maybe any other thing, you see that it matches true. So the dot matches any single character, right? So if you want to match more than one, you can increase it to, let's say, to four. You can specify into four places. So it's going to match four characters. So characters here can be numbers or strings, right? C can be numbers or letters. Let's now match a word character, either A to Z or uh, a to Z uppercase or 0 to 9. So the regular expression for it, let's specify it here, is slash W, slash W. So, but now you can find out that Java have uh, placed uh, a complaint. You can see it's giving an error in this place. So for us to actually use a string here, we need to escape the slash. So we have to just add one more slash to escape it. So what this matches is any word character, right? So if I run this, you find out that it gives us false because it matches a single character as well. So if I go ahead to run it, it gives us true. So if I, if I go a second time, let's say slash w, slash w, I'm going to escape again, slash w. So at this time, we are going to match two, two different word characters. So if I go ahead to run it, it gives us false. But if I put a different, a second character here, you can see that it turns out to be true. So the two things you have learned now is the dots matches any single character, and then the the slash w backslash w matches any word character. Now let me show you that there is a difference between any character and any word character. So if I go ahead to put something like this sign here, and then we run it, you see that it gives us false because this is not a word character. Take note that a word character is A to Z uppercase, A to Z lowercase, and 0 to 9 plus the underscore character. So that is what you have here. So now if I want to match something that is not a word character, I'm going to use uppercase W. So at this point, if I change this to uppercase of W, you find out that it's going to match correctly because this is not a word character, right? Good. So let me try to use the two at the same time. 
I want to match a word character and also a non-word character, right? I want to match the first one will be a word character and a non-word character. So for instance, I want to match something like uh, a, a word character and a non-word character would be something like arrow and this. So this is a word character followed by a non-word character, right? So if I can, if I say W, it's actually going to fail because we need to follow this word character by a non-word character. So what I'm going to do is simply say double slash and I put a non-word character. So the first one, it expects a word character and the second place it expects a non-word character and now it's going to return true. So I'm using the two at the same time. Now I want to match a word character followed by a non-word character followed by any character at all. So I'm going to now, in the next line, I'm going to put a dot. So if I go ahead to run it, it's going to return false because it expects a third item which can either be a character or a non-word character. So let me go ahead to put a line here and I'm going to run it and you see that it, run, it runs perfectly. So you see how interesting regular expression can be? So let's move a, a step further to match a white space character. So to match a white space character, you use what? You use slash s. So what it means is that if I run it with what we already have, it's going to give false. If I give an empty, empty string, it's also going to give false. But if I give a space in between, you see that it's going to give true because this matches a space or a white space character. For the other one, we have Upper, uppercase s to match a non-space character so at this point if i click on it it gives us false but if i have a non-space character in there it also works perfectly to give us true then we also have any digit from 0 to 9 so let's try that so this now we are restricting ourselves a digit and if i run it is going to fail because y is not a digit y is a letter is a letter from the alphabet is a non-digit so but if I use 6, sorry, let's say D, if I use 6 at this point, you find out that it's going to return true. As you can see, it gives us true because it's checking for digits. Let's say I want to check for three numbers in a, in a stretch. So I can easily say, repeat this one to say slash slash D and slash slash D. And at this point, if I specify three, three numbers, it's going to return true. But if the number is more than if the numbers are more than 3, it's going to return false. And if it's less than 3, it's actually also going to return false. So we also have non-digits. So if I want to return non-digits, I find non-digits, I use capital letter D. And if I run it now, it's going to fail. It's going to be false. If I run it with 6, it's going to fail because 6 is not a non-digit. But if I use a non-digit, is going to return true. So basically you can see a pattern that we have uppercase is actually a negation of the lowercase. When W is matching the word characters, lowercase W matches the word characters, uppercase W matches non-word characters. When it comes to S, lowercase S matches white space character, uppercase S matches non-white space character, and uppercase D matches any digit, and I mean, lowercase d matches any digit and uppercase d matches non-digit. So you can see the pattern here. So I want you to take some time to get your head around these uh, matching characters and also try to see how you can combine it as I taught you before and then you see how it works. In the next tutorial, we are going to continue with matching word boundaries or matching boundaries and that is how interesting and clear regular expression is. I would like to thank you for viewing and I'd like to remind you to subscribe and also like the video and leave a comment if you find anything challenging.